their, her family was a pretty well to do. Not at first, not when she was really young, but I think, I think when she started to get into her teens, I think they started to do pretty well for themselves, or grandpa did. I believe steel, like he owned a steel plant. Shreveport, Louisiana. She was very much a uh, daddy's girl. Um, got her way, I'm willing to bet. When she, um, you know, when she was just a little girl, a toddler, grandpa would call her Bitsy Go-Go because she always wanted to go, go, go. Uh, Bitsy was her nickname. Um, I think he called her Bitsy because she was, she was really small. I think mom was like five foot two or something. Uh, but when she was a little girl, she was really small. They called her Itsy Bitsy. Dresses and makeup and perfume and dances and recitals. And apparently she p played the piano. I just found out. I didn't even know that. Uh, my sister Renee said that uh, mom played the piano. I don't think she was deeply religious when she was younger. I think it was more of a, uh, like a, a family tradition, more of a formality. Later on, I think after she, you know, life had, well, after she, she had experienced life more, I think she began to find her own version of religion. There was, uh, I found a report card um, from a long time ago, and uh, she actually was a really good student. She had A's and B's, and uh, the only thing that she failed, or she actually she didn't fail, and she got a D, but that was math. After her mother passed away, she, she was 19, and I think her, her mom kind of took a lot of the spotlight as she was growing up. Her mom had a lot of physical ailments and um, is a lot of ongoing problems. And um, so I think that took a lot of her father's energy and, and attention. And so I'm, I'm pretty sure that um, mom and Michael Bob were probably left to, maybe left to their own devices. Talked about her first romances a lot. The problem was every time she did, the name changed. So I think she had a lot of boyfriends. And I think depending on what mood she's in, she remembers one in a, she, she would remember one in a, more, in a more fond light than another. And uh, we'll talk about them, but they were always, you know, um, the football captain or something like that. That's the kind of girl that she was. She would date the football captain. She was the popular girl at school. When I saw, started going through her photo albums and saw pictures of uh, when she was younger, my mom was like strikingly beautiful. I had no idea. Um, I think at first she wanted to join the military, be in the Air Force. She was kind of obsessed with flight, it seems, because a lot of her <clears throat> her first husband was um, going through flight school. And I don't think he ended up getting in. Um, her second husband was a test pilot for the Army. Several of her boyfriends were pilots. So um, I remember she and I'm pretty sure she was part of the, uh, I want to say the Air National Guard, I'm pretty sure. I don't think she went to college. Um, I think she um, had a series of romances um, and eventually she got married. She met Bob, Bob Bites and uh, <clears throat> married him. I ended up having my old, oldest sister, Lori. She got out of that little podunk town in Louisiana that um, she was eager to get out of. She met my dad, she got to go to California, which in those days um, it was kind of like the promised land. Everyone was going to California and you know, there were opportunities abound. And not only that, she was marrying a, an air, you know, someone in the Air Force and she thought he was going to be an Air Force pilot, but it turned out he just uh, made a radio squad or something. He was a radio tower guy. So she, I think she thought she was gonna see the world you know, with an Air Force pilot. My mom was more, if you knew my mom per personally, like very personally, she was more apt to talk about serious things than she was about non-serious things. Um, which is why you know, having an interview like this and trying to reminisce about happy stuff in her past, it's hard because she didn't talk about it too much. But one of the big things that she would talk about is what happened with her mom that was, that really, really shaped who she was. Her. <clears throat> Mother had had uh, some fused discs in her, in her spine, and back then there was there was very limited things that they could do to um, repair that, and uh, so they would basically medicate her. And medication of that sort was pretty experimental back then, and so they would do they were mixing different medications that today would be viewed as you know not retarded. So. Uh, 
I think it caused a lot of emotional problems with her mom, and I think her mom got severely addicted to, to pain medication. And um, one day she uh, went out to my Uncle Bob's car, I believe, and got his, his gun out and um, went behind the house and uh, shot herself. I think from that point on, it got real distant. Before that, he was the generic 40s and 50s father figure. He just brought home the bacon, and if he said something, you did it. Um, I think that was about it. I don't think he was a super loving, affectionate guy. Um, after that, he very, very quickly got into another relationship, and I think that upset my mom a bit, um, and I think that drove her from him a bit. She went off on her own at that point. Tony Antonio, she's she, of all the husbands she had, she spoke probably the fondest about him. Um, he was kind of like a he was a test pilot for the army, and um, he was the crazy party animal, live life on the edge kind of guy. And <laughs> she did, she did end up marrying an Air Force pilot, not only just an Air Force pilot, test pilot who got to work for everyone, the aviation companies, the army who needed him. People ask me, well, why did you move so often? You must have been an Army brat or Air Force brat. And uh, it's like, well, I was kind of a little of both. I said, we moved around a lot because my stepdad was a test pilot. We lived on every testing base in the country, just about. And uh, we lasted a lot lo longer in the warmer climates. Uh, Mom didn't like snow. We uh, went to Ohio, and I think uh, I think uh, we made it about eight weeks, and she wanted out of there. And so she did end up marrying the test pilot and moved with him. And but then once they were divorced, she she still kept moving. For anybody who doesn't know, my mom was 68 when she passed. Okay, she's moved 87 times. 87 times. Um, I think he really swept her off her feet and would probably do a lot of really, really cool romantic things. I think it was real fun for my mom. I think she had a really good time. I think she, she was very fond of those days. And that's when she got uh, pregnant with my older brother, Michael. But most of her moves were usually associated with the man in her life. And uh, I think she was a romantic. I know she was a romantic. She was um, kind of in love with the idea of being in love and changing her life or um, whatever was necessary for that love. And when she moved to Australia, I mean, that's she went there for, for a man. She followed a man there, and then another she met pilot. another one. There's another pilot, I think. And he was a pilot too, oh, yeah. <laughs> so she had an aviation thing. Well, uh, by that time, uh, Michael was eight years old. Uh, Lori was several years older than him. Um, I think I want to say like four, five years older. And uh, my mom had uh, followed a, a love of hers to, uh, he was a Qantas pilot, um, followed him to Australia and she moved there. She took uh, her two kids and went there with her friend, Susan, and uh, to live. And um, while she was there, she actually had a couple jobs. Um, she worked as a sales rep for a, a, a fuel company. Uh, she ended up meeting my father, John Baff, and um, uh, they went away on vacation and um, she sent uh, Lori and Michael to camp. And while they're at camp on a horseback riding trip, for, I uh, believe Michael had a, an aneurysm. That was a... Uh, that was another big turning point in her life. Um, it was really interesting going back and looking through all the photos of her and because um, I could basically see her life from the beginning all the way to the end. And uh, I'm pretty good at, at reading people. I could read her facial expressions in the pictures and her body language in the pictures and change significantly from that point forward from what I could tell.